Form Next 2022 and Carbon with Andrew Sink. Hey Joel, how's it going? It's going great. This is this is amazing. I've known Andrew for a long time, and finally at Form Next 2022 at the Carbon booth, we have met for the first time. And this is great because Carbon has a lot of really cool stuff, and you get to lead us through. So before we go through that, though, let everyone out there know what is Carbon. Carbon is a 3D printing technology company. So our tagline, as you can see back here, is the idea to production platform. So we're really focused on helping our customers succeed by manufacturing at scale. And manufacturing at scale is actually producing the parts that we get to see. So you promised me cool stuff. It's now time. Andrew, show me cool stuff. So here on the table, we've got a couple of examples of what we would consider production parts. So these are parts that are, you can go buy them in a store, you can buy them online. These are produced in the quantities of tens to hundreds of thousands, all the way up to millions. Oh. Which is kind of a lot. A lot lot. I, I would agree. Okay. So a lot of these products, especially, I've been involved in 3D printing, as you know, for over a decade now. And so one thing that's really exciting to me about 3D printing at scale is being able to see something that you can buy in a store. Right. You can shop on Etsy and other craft websites and purchase sure. 3D printed items, but going to a big box store and seeing a 3D printed thing, that is still new to me. Kind of an example of this is I talk about 3D printing a lot and I talk about how cool 3D printing is, but what really made it real is my wife and I were visiting her parents in Detroit. We stopped at a shoe store and I bought her a pair of these 3D printed shoes. Well, it's really unusual because when we talk about shoes, we talk about unit numbers of hundreds of thousands. Of course. So carbon can do that. Yeah, of course. So the way that we think about 3D printing, you are trying to solve a production problem. You have a part you want to bring to market. And so mm -hmm. what carbon does and what people like me do, we focus on designing this part so it can be made to meet quantified standards. So we have a compression target. You want to simulate a foam. You've got something you want to be lightweight, airy, breathable. Like you've got specific targets. And once that part's ready for production, we'll send that off to one of our contract manufacturers who have fleets of hundreds of printers that are able to churn those out. I love these shoes. I mean, I, I have some. And you're wearing the shoes right yeah, now? Yeah, I am absolutely I'm wearing, wearing the, the shoes. shoes. Oh, shoe five. So now, there's other things here. Yeah, there's absolutely. There's other things here. So this is an example. So this is a bike saddle by the you. company Physique. And Physique, so Physique, this is a 3D, oh, it's soft. It is, yeah, and then it gets firm on the side. But it's but it's not as soft here. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So this was designed using our software, Design Engine Pro, which is basically able to take an incoming design space, which is what we refer to as kind of the CAD geometry of the model, the outline, the shape, the profile. Okay, okay. And we want to convert that into a latticed part, but we want the lattice to have a couple of properties. It needs to be conformal, so it needs to contour on all the edges, and then we also want to make sure that it performs in the desired way. So we want something that's a little bit firmer on the sides. You want makes sense. Soft in the center. And if you were to make this out of foam, traditionally, one, two, three, four different pieces. And so here, this pops off the printer, it gets put on a frame, and it goes on to a shelf where someone so, buys it. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have different shore hardnesses in the same print. Effectively, yeah. So you have different densities. These Or different densities, yeah. yeah. So we're, we refer to it's volumetric density or strut diameter. So strut if you look diameter, how thick that's a fun word. And you've got some thick struts, and then you've got some thin struts. Oh, look at that! Okay, you can sort of see that transition between them. Oh, oh, so and, and using this allows you to give it different, different properties. Di different properties. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. I agree. That's so cool. <laughs> so this is something that's pretty exciting. Uh, this is a new material we just launched a form next. This is EPU forty five. EPU. I know. I've heard of TPU. Uh, this is an elastomeric polyurethane. Okay. So this is a two-part resin. You may have seen this very recently. Wait, wait. A two-part resin. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? So yes. we use two different resin uh, chemistries when we're making our parts. So we have a UV cure, which gives it the initial green state hardness, so it can be handled. And then we have a thermal bake cycle, which unlocks those full mechanical properties. So we're able to print parts that are durable, strong, and can be repeatably flexed. This is pretty stiff, right? It, it, this is, it's stiff, but it's still squishy. Yeah. And it, it returns. It does. So this one right here, the idea here is this is what we would consider an energy absorbing lattice. So it's sort of soft. If you push down, you can kind of touch it and you can feel it move slowly. But if you hit it, you can feel it stiffens up. It's it oobleck. It's oobleck. It's basically it's printed oobleck. oobleck. It's basically printed oobleck. So this, and, and this is part of the, that, that two part resin. So yep. then you do the UV cure. Yep. 
and then the, the bake yeah. gives it that, that extra property. That's so, that's so cool. And we have a couple different resins and they have different applications. So I'm gonna take you over here. We're gonna take a look at a helmet. Ooh, a helmet, all right, yeah. let's do it. So this helmet is made by Hardhead Veterans. And so what you're looking at here. Hardhead Veterans, what a Hardhead fun name. Veterans. Super fun name. Um, and what you're looking at is a helmet that has a 3D printed interior padding. Yeah, there's, there's no traditional foam in here yeah, at all. Correct. And this is not a lightweight helmet by any no, means. No, it is not a lightweight helmet. Oh, wow. Yet it's wow. surprisingly comfortable because we have a comfort layer of foam simulated with these thin struts on top of this lattice. I see. So then the geometry here is providing different levels of density. Correct, exactly. To mimic foam. Yeah. And rather than two pieces of foam, it's one print. Yeah, so if you think about a traditional, like a bicycle helmet or a traditional helmet, you've usually got that sort of layer of thin comfort foam, right. black, it's crumbly, and it gets all over your hair. And that's kind of the comfort aspect. The comfort aspect, comfort okay, foam. sure. And then you have your EPS foam, which is a little bit thicker, and that's the white foam that when you wrap on it with your knuckles, you hear a click, click, click. Very okay. stiff. Ah, okay. Yeah, so what we're trying to do here is mimic the properties of both of those in a single print. So when you look at this and you think, well, it's only one layer, how can it provide protection as well as comfort? This is how it does that. I mean, I know you're calling it a comfort layer, but it's it's comfortable. Like pushing on it is is not a bad experience. It's this is amazing. Yeah. So the basic idea behind it is we're trying to mimic these different foams to these different properties that we want to try and capture. So what we spend a lot of time doing is characterizing. We take a material and we try to understand how does this material respond to stress. Then once we understand that modulus okay. or that stress strain curve. We can mimic that, simulate it in our software, and then 3D print a matching lattice. Oh, I see. Oh, that's a really cool way of thinking about it. Like any any 3D print that you're going to do, if it's going to replace something in, in place, then you just have to find out how that material is being used and how it's responding to stresses exactly. in context, and the 3D print just has to be able to handle that. Exactly right. <laughs> you want to see the printer? I do want to see the printer. Let's go take a look. All right. But I want to show you Something, it's a very small feature on this printer, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. So I want you to grab this platform right behind you. Okay. And I want to imagine that you need to put this platform into the printer. Okay. And your hands are full. Oh, okay. Familiar, right? This yeah, is starting yeah, to I, feel like I how understand I have this. to go through this okay. process of putting it down. So, so there must be an interesting way of getting in here. There sure is. So put your foot right where you see that green light. Okay. And now lift. <laughs> That's really fun. And now you're good well, to go. But that's a, that's a great feature. When you're making millions of parts, every second counts. Every second counts. Well, and ease of use is paramount. So then to close it, it's just the same action? To close it, it's the same action. So you can just repeat that process. That's really cool. And oh, Andrew, print. that's really cool. You know, people are gonna be really interested in carbon and the parts that we got to see, and they're gonna wanna know more about it. Could you look at the camera and tell the audience where they can go to find out more information? You can visit our website at carbon3d.com. You can read all about the products that we make, the printers, the specifications. You can read about the dual cure resin. There's a ton of really cool information on there. You know, I'll put a link down in the description just so they can click it really easily. Andrew, so good to meet you finally. Good to meet you too, Joel. This have is a good, great. Have a good rest of the form next, man. Yeah, enjoy form next. Shoot five.